Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus, and this is the fourth and final part of paper two uh, from the Timua from 2019, the test of mathematics for University admissions. I've put eight parts out in total now, each with five questions for paper one and paper two. They're all in a playlist that's linked below. Um, so I hope this is useful for you in preparing for your exams. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the website and the Amazon store uh, and everything else there if you want some recommendations for books and wider reading. Otherwise, let me get on with these uh, questions, the hardest ones from this second paper. So in question 16, it says we've got the, this graph of a quadratic y equals px squared plus qx plus p, uh, where p greater than zero intersects the x-axis at two distinct points. So these things on the right here are not the graphs of this quadratic. It says in which one of the following shaded graphs does the region show the complete set of values of possible, possible for p and q so that that's the case, right? So um, so again, if you think, so remember if I've got a quadratic, p is bigger than zero, so it's a positive quadratic. If it's going to intersect the axis here at two points, we need the discriminant of the quadratic to be bigger than zero, so that'll get two real roots. So the discriminant here, you know, b squared minus 4ac, has to be bigger than zero. So in here, that's just q squared minus 4p squared has to be bigger than zero. So I need q squared to be bigger than 4p squared. So that means that either q is bigger than 2p, because um, you know 4p squared is uh, 2p all squared. So so for q squared to be bigger than 2p squared, we either need q is bigger than 2p or q uh, is less than minus 2p. Okay, um, I mean this is a fairly straightforward inference here. If you think about, uh, you know, if you if you just think of it as sort of a y squared is bigger than uh, 25, you either get y is bigger than 5 or y is less than minus 5. Um, so so that's fine. Right, so we've just got to look at these graphs and say which one corresponds to q bigger than 2p or q less than minus 2p. Well. Uh, okay, so we've only got the positive p axis because we know p is positive, um, and the line q equals 2p has gradient 2, so we've got that in uh, most of these, but but not in these ones. And so bigger than 2p and less than minus 2p, uh, so again, not these, it's between these two where I've got the line 2p and minus 2p, uh, and I want the bits where q is bigger than two, the line uh, q equals 2p or below the line q equals minus 2p, and so we can see that's this uh, option here, which is f. So in question 17, we've got a multiple choice test question offering four options relating to a certain statement. It's either true if and only if x is greater than 1, if x is greater than 1, if and only if x is greater than 2, and if x is greater than 2. It says given exactly one of these options was correct, which one was it? Right, so let's think about this. Let's just start with statements a and b, right? So it says is it true if and only if x is bigger than 1, uh, or if x is bigger than 1? Right, so, well, you know, A has two things. It has to be true if x is bigger than 1, and also only if it's bigger than 1. Right, so if that if, if, if A holds, then B necessarily holds, because it's a weaker statement, right? So we must have that A implies B, right? So now think about it. Could option A be the only option that was correct then? Well, no, because if A is correct, B also has to be correct. So it can't be A. Right? And for exactly the same reason, because C implies D, the answer can't be C here, right? Because if C were true, D would also have to be true. Right, so let's just think carefully about B and D. Right? And we've got the case, so is the state, if the statement is true when X is bigger than one, right? well, so for all values, bigger than 1, the statement is true here, right? So whatever that statement is, it's necessarily also true, it's already true for all values greater than 2. So it must be here that b implies d, and so again we can't have b being true just on its own, because if b were true, d would also be true. So the answer can't be b, and the final answer is d. Question 18, we've got to consider the following inequality. a mod x plus 1 is less than or equal to mod x minus 2, and which of the following describes the complete set of values uh, where, where this is true for all real x. So I think here I just want to sketch the graphs of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Often the way these questions are written down, by the way, you know, that sometimes you, know, you might think about trying to manipulate, manipulate them, and you could do this question in other ways as well, perhaps by squaring or something, but, um, but they're, they're sometimes uh, in these questions phrased in a way that they're meant to be attackable as they are. And we'll see that in one of the later questions here as well. So mod x minus 2 just hits the axis here at 2 um, and 2. 
and look something like that. And a mod x plus 1, well, it's going to go through 1 at 0. And now, if you think about it, if a is positive here, the graph is going to then look something uh, like this. And then it definitely, we definitely can't have an inequality here for all values of x, where one graph is totally below the other. So the only way we can do it is if uh, a is negative. And again, you can look at some of the answers for clues to the things you're meant to think about here, thinking about a being negative. Right, so down here, there are some options where the this graph will be entirely under uh, this one. And the cutoff point is going to be exactly uh, where the graph looks like this. So we just have to decide what value of a uh, this corresponds to. Uh, so the gradient of this line is minus 2, um, sorry, um, minus 1 over 2. So this must correspond to a equals minus a half. And uh, so if I had anything less than that, like a equals minus 3 or something, then it's going to be steeper. So the values that it works for is going to be a is less than or equal to minus a half. And then the answer here uh, is e. Right, um, so again, here's another example where the form the question's in is meant to be a little bit of a hint in a way. It says find the value of the expression uh, you know, with all these square roots. And they've done something a bit strange, right? Because they've written, rather than in this first one, rather than writing 9, they've written 8 plus 1 and separated it out. And that implies that this is perhaps going to have a clever factorization in it. Combined with the fact that here also uh, 8 is equal to 2 root 2 um, might uh, also give us a bit of a clue here, right? So I could think of this first one as 2 root 2 squared minus 4 root 2 plus 1. And then it doesn't take too much of a leap to realize that this is 2 root 2 minus 1 all squared, because it's in the form a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. All right, so actually this first one is the square root of 2 root 2 squared minus 1. And then we try and do the same for the other one here. And this time I've got uh, th you know 3 squared minus 12 root 2 plus 2 root 2 squared. And again, we can just see that that's 3 minus 2 root 2 uh, all squared. And uh, we want to take positive square roots here. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I've, you know, because I could write 2 root 2 minus 1 all squared as 1 minus 2 root 2 all squared. So clearly when I, you know, there's two square roots of this number, the positive and the, the negative one, because this is the positive square root sign, I want to take the positive one. Um, 2 root 2 is going to be bigger than 1. So this one I do want to take 2 root 2 minus 1. And also 3 is bigger than 2 root 2. So actually they're already both the, the right way around. So this is what I get. Uh, the 2 root 2's cancel out, and I'm just left with 3 minus 1, which is 2. So the answer is e. And here in the final question, it says when the graph of the function y equals f of x to find all the real numbers is reflected in the y-axis and then translated by two units in the negative x direction, we get the function g of x. So let's deal with that uh, and write down the function g of x. So if I reflect in the y-axis, um, I would get f of minus x, right? We, re we replace x with minus x. And if I translate by two units, in the negative x direction, um, I, I get uh, you know the, the basic transformation is that I do uh, f of x plus two, right? Um, so what does that mean here? Well, I because uh, I've already done this one, right? So uh, okay, I, I can't use g. Let's just call this uh, let's call it t of x, right? So what I want to do is to do t of x plus two, okay? To shift this to the left by two units. So this would be f of minus x plus 2. And I've got to keep the x plus 2 in brackets, uh, which is a lot clearer when you introduce this intermediate function t. This, these aren't really asked in single maths A level anymore, so people are not as comfortable with these. But, um, but anyway, overall here we get f of minus x minus 2. So similarly, it says when we translate by two units in the negative x direction and then reflect in the y-axis, we get the graph y equals h of x. So, uh, okay, so let's say, let's just make u of x the intermediate function here. So go two units in the negative x direction. So that's f of x plus two. And then my function h of x is going to be reflected, reflection of u in the y-axis. So it's u of minus x. So I get of f of minus x plus two here. And it says which of the conditions means that g of x is and h of x are identical. Uh, so, um, so let's put my expressions for 
um, oh I wrote t of uh, x plus 2 here that was right actually but I, but this one I'm calling g of x so this is this is g of x and this is h of x so I want those to be the same so I want f of minus x minus 2 to be f of minus x plus 2 they haven't been nice enough to give that as one of the conditions here um, so I'm gonna have to just um, rewrite these slightly so um, if I make the same substitution into both here, it's not going to overall affect the function. It's just going to sort of change the naming of the coordinates, if that makes sense. So let's make it so the left hand side is x here. So if I make uh, let's let's replace uh, well. So so I want to make this just 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 x, or maybe I'll make it u or something. Actually, that would be less confusing. So let's just make u equals minus x minus two. So effectively here I'm writing x equals minus u minus 2 and substituting that in here so that will give me f of u and I have to do the same over here then I'm going to get minus minus u minus 2 plus 2 so that's f of minus minus u is u and then plus 2 plus 2 so uh, f of u plus 4 which of course is the same as saying you know f of x is f of x plus 4 the renaming doesn't matter um, here so uh, is that one of the answers? Uh, yes it is, and the answer is B. So I hope that was useful, some really tough questions towards the end of the Tamir here. These Tamir questions obviously great practice for the short answer questions from the for the mat as well, and vice versa. So if you're practicing Tamir, I've done a few years of mat papers where you can have a look through the short answer questions there, and you can see a lot of overlap between the types of questions and the ideas that come up there as well. So I really hope this series has been useful to you all. Um, do put in the comments if you've got other ways of solving these questions. Uh, let me know how you get on in the exam if you're taking it this year or in future years and if this video has been helpful in your preparation I'd love to hear about that. Uh, so good luck with the exam and I will see you in the next videos.